Thank you so much to Vessi for sponsoring today's video and having a girl covered for any type of weather and also making me look stylish. If you guys are like me and you struggle with unpredictable weather, you never know when it's going to rain. Should I wear boots? Should I not wear boots? Vessis are the best option to put right beside your front door. And particularly, these ones are the Vessi Storm Bursts. They are 100% waterproof. They will keep your feet dry in the wettest of weather, but they are also super comfortable, super breathable and they are stylish so that you don't compromise that part of your outfit just for practicality. They are made from Dymatex, which is a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in the summer and warm in colder weather. It really doesn't feel like it should be waterproof, but it is. They also have an added lugged rubber outsole, which adds that extra grip in slipper wet conditions, which will come in super handy for those rainy, endless months. So you can check out the Vessi Stormburst and other styles at Vessi.com slash Reads, and you can use code MALREADS to get 15% off your entire order. Annotating books is one of my favorite subject matters when it comes to being a reader. I've talked about this a lot in the past, but I really, really love interacting with the text, writing in my books, personalizing them so that they feel my own. And there is honestly no greater joy, I would argue. Well, I've said that a lot recently, but it's one of the greatest joys of reading, I think. Granted, annotation is not gonna be for everybody. People are not gonna wanna write in their books and that's completely okay. But for me personally, as a reader, I just love the face in my books. And because of that, I thought that today would be quite, quite nice to talk about how I currently annotate my books with a few other extras. Also going to be talking about why I annotate and different types of annotation because in the course of my trajectory with annotating books, I have pursued a lot of different methods and I just thought I'd share with you guys. And the reality is that annotating is such a subjective and personal thing. There is no right or wrong way to annotating. It is something that you kind of have to figure out on your own and see what fits and what doesn't and what you as a reader look for as you read. But I know that seeing what other people do is immensely helpful because that's how I got started. So I hope you guys are ready. And for the first part, let's get into why I annotate. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, which is something I've talked about before in my other installments of how I annotate, I love interacting with the text. And that's one of my favorite parts of annotating a book is that I feel like in some way, shape or form, I am providing my input into the story, even though it doesn't affect it in the slightest because there's no real way for me to affect what's happening because it's already written. But I like giving my input. I like replying back to the characters. It's almost like a form of catharsis almost when I maybe don't Agree with what the character is doing or maybe I'm angry at something or something has made me cry or something has made me scream of joy. I love to document that in the book and again interact with the text in the same way that the book is providing me comfort. I find it comforting to be able to reply to the book and so that's one of the first few reasons why I love annotating. Another one of the reasons why I love annotating as well is that it comes in super handy when it's a part of a series. So let's say we're talking about let's say Stormlight Archive, which I just saw on my bookshelf, or the Diviner series by Liva Bray, or the Greenbone Saga, whichever series it is. I am not huge on rereads. I suck at rereads, and I've tried many a time to read my favorites. Sometimes it takes me up to a year to finish that reread. A lot of my rereads I end up DNFing because I just have the book still somewhat fresh in my brain. And so knowing that I'm not a rereader, annotating comes in extremely handy for when that new installment is coming out or when a big bigger amount of time has passed between me picking up book one and book two. I can just pick up book one or whichever book it is and just flip through the pages, flip through the annotation and really reacquaint myself with the story without having to reread the entire book because I took note of those moments that to me were very important to remember as I was reading. And so I kind of always have future Mel in mind when I'm reading of like, oh, if I ever flip through my book, this is something I would like to remember. This is something that would be important to note, where I feel like this is something that might come back in later installments that I feel is important to remember at some point of 
throughout the series. I think also one of the potentially more obvious reasons as to why I like to annotate is obviously book reviewing. When you're annotating a book, or at least in my experience, it is a lot easier to recall information. So not only does it help with the retention of what I am reading, which is something that we all sort of learn in school, but when I am sitting down and I'm filming a wrap up or I'm filming a vlog or a video project or I have a live show discussing a particular book, having those notes in the book help me to extract all of that information or at least the ones that I really, really found important or that really jumped out at me. And then I'll make a proper bullet point list with all the things I want to reference as I'm filming, as I am live. And it really does come in quite handy for it. And I think more than anything for me is that I find annotation fun. I love sitting down with the book and be able to write in it, highlight, write out all of my thoughts, put the tab in, see how the tabs grow on the side of the book. I absolutely love it because I'm still having a lot of fun. Also, I would like to note that while I do love to annotate and it's a feeling that brings me a lot of joy when I am enjoying a book, it is most definitely not for everybody. It is totally okay to not annotate a book. And I know that with a wave of social media and TikTok and Instagram and YouTube, we may want to start annotating because everybody else is doing it. But I think that at the end of the day, we all have to safe keep and we have to protect our love and fun of reading. And so if you personally think that annotating is something that could take away from that experience for you, don't pick up a pen, don't pick up a highlight, don't pick up a post-it, it's totally okay. And so just as a little reminder before we walk into the tools I use for annotation, let's go. <laughs> All right, friends, let us start with the basics. Let us start with pens and highlighters. I have a variety of options. I like to keep them all handy on the desk just in case I'm feeling a certain way when picking up a book and I know I have a variety of different options. It's just me being extra more than anything. The very first most basic thing beyond a pencil is a pen. I particularly love this one because it doesn't bleed through the page. It doesn't have any ghosting. It runs super smoothly, super black ink, and this is the Uniball Signo Pen. Absolutely love it. Regardless of what type of paper it is, this is my tried and true. If you're more into the colored pen, gel pen, look and feel and style, I would really suggest you go with these. They do come in color coordinated packs or not necessarily color coordinated, but they do come in those color palette packs. These are the Zebra Sarasa Clip Pens. These are so good. Again, just like the last one, they run super smoothly, super opaque ink. There are a lot of colors in this particular style of pen, and so I have opted for these ones now, whereas before I used to use the Stabilo pens, I find that these ones are a lot better. And then for highlighters, again, have a variety of options. We first have this style right here. This went sort of viral on TikTok. Everybody was using this type of highlighter it doesn't have a brand on it, so I'll just find a link. I will be leaving everything linked down below, by the way, but this went sort of viral on TikTok, and I have quite enjoyed these. Also, don't bleed. They barely shadow. It will depend on the type of paper, obviously, when it comes to highlighters, but for the most part, super smooth. The one thing I will say is that I don't know if I just got a faulty pack or if I just ran through it very quickly, but in my experience, they run out of ink fairly quickly. I say that because I actually annotated the entirety of The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, around a 600 page book, alternating between pen and highlighter, and one of the highlighters completely ran out of ink as I was annotating that book. Or maybe I'm just crazy and I annotate too much. That is also an option. Another one I really, really love because it's also a pastel set. It is the Stabilo Swing Cool. When I find myself color coordinating the tabs and the color of highlighters, these are the highlighters that I've been reaching for just because these colors I haven't been able to find in other sets. However, these you have to be very careful with because they are jam-packed with ink. If you press a little bit too hard, they might bleed. And so that's the only thing is you kind of do have to be careful. One of my other favorites is the Tombow Dual Brush Pens. These are really for calligraphy or for painting. However, I love these for annotating. I find that they run amazing. They rarely bleed on any type of page I use, which is amazing. The only 
one that you might have just a little bit of difficulty with is like Bible thin paper just because it's a proper marker and not necessarily a highlighter particularly this shade which is like a, a neutral beige I find myself repurchasing this particular shade so many times they do sell it individually it's just amazing it's a super neutral shade you can use with any type of tab and then last but not least it's the fan favorites the mild liner this really is like the best you will find when it comes to a highlighter for annotating your books this is the highlighter that doesn't bleed it rarely shadows it runs super smoothly they do come both in small packs and big packs some other things i like to keep handy are post-its just when my annotations are getting a bit out of control on the margins and i need a little bit more space to write down in i have both the small one and the pastel ones another great alternative i've been seeing a lot of people use are transparent post-its like these ones. These are completely see-through. Like if I put my finger beneath it, you'll be able to see my finger. These are amazing for when you don't want to directly write down in your book and you still want to see the text, but maybe you want to underline a little something. You'll just paste this on top and then you'll highlight on top of this. The only downfall or at least the only downfall of this particular post-it I myself found, you need a Sharpie pen. And listen, these are great because even with this ones, you can write on top of the plasticky tabs and that'll be fantastic however you will need something that's wholly permanent won't smudge won't butch won't move anywhere and the only thing i have found that doesn't go anywhere is this sharpie retractable pen and then for our favorite subject matter the tabs back when i started i was using very specific tab sets that i think at the time was like the fan favorite which is if i can find it it's this one i think this is the more universal tablet everybody uses now i'm crazy <laughs> and now i have way too many sets of tabs so now what i do is that i color coordinate it with the book or like whatever vibe feels right so i have the older set that again everybody loves and adores it's like the tried and true. I also bought this smaller tab set right here, which is more of a pastel bundle. I also bought these and I actually found this to be so immensely helpful. Very few tab sets have repeated colors. And so sometimes when you choose one color for one specific thing to tab, you run out of it and you're like, shoot, now I have to open another tab set. And so I find that this with double up was so, so good for me. Again, we've got more pastel ones and yes, these are different, more colorful shades. And one of my absolute favorites is this very just muted color, darker color palette. I use all of these depending on the book. And now for the moment that we've all hopefully been waiting for, it's how I annotate nowadays. And I will first get into this and then we'll get into a few other alternatives, my journey with annotating and what I've done in the past that could potentially be helpful for the people that are just now getting into it. Believe it or not, my annotation system has remained pretty much the same in the course of the past few years. I think what I have realized though in my journey of annotating is that each book is different. You are probably going to annotate each book just a little bit Bit different than the last and although there are universal things that I look for when I'm going into a book I will probably not annotate a fantasy sci-fi the same way I do a romance or a literary fiction for example what I find extremely helpful when I am annotating a book regardless of genre is to do a little annotation key and what I will do here is literally put down the tab color and then on top of it with the sharpie pen go over with what each tab means for the most part for me at least I have a universal tapping system so I know the things I personally value and look for as a reader, they could potentially change per book. So for example, things I look for are things I love. And with things I love, it's pretty wide. This could be a quote that I really liked, a passage that really spoke to me and I loved the writing style, something that was romantic, something that made me giggle, something that made me go, oh my god, yes. I know some people will break it down and will have different tabs for it. I personally find that one tab for me suffices when it comes to that department. Another one of my tabs in my system would be for sad. This could be something that was sad for the character, something that I personally found sad, something that made me cry. Again, each tab is not limited to that particular word, but there are nuances to the tab, I guess we could say. Another tab I will use is perhaps something that made me angry, something that perhaps was unfair between characters, something that made me want to scream at the character, something that I found immensely 
disgusting that was said or done in the story, I will use the angry tab for. Another one of the things I value immensely as a reader are those thematic statements, those commentary passages in the book, and so I have a tab dedicated for that. So anything that could potentially fall under that umbrella, I tab and I basically note what theme exactly it addresses and I just write a little note of how I either agree or disagree because that's the other thing. I don't only annotate things I love in a book but I will also tap the things that I don't particularly agree with. If it applies for a book I will also have a tab for triggers. It might be a bit of a weird thing to annotate however as far as book reviewing goes I do like to note what trigger warnings could potentially be in the book so that when I'm talking to you guys about it I know that I can reference that particular trigger warning and I will also keep a post at the start of the book that sort of mentions exactly what is included in there that is worth disclosing when recommending a book, especially because publishing doesn't disclose those things. Another thing I will tab is world building. And again, that only qualifies for fantasy and sci-fi. And when it comes to world building, things I am looking for when I am annotating is, let's say, for example, they're talking about how the world was made or how the magic works or how this particular book was so important for the history and the person of so and so and so. I will annotate all of those things because maybe it won't come in handy in that particular installment, but later on in a series, it could potentially come in handy. Other things I've annotated in the past is potential foreshadowing or what I myself would consider to be foreshadowing. So let's say, for example, a character is having an interaction and they go, oh my god, it could never be this person. Like, I just met them and they're so nice and so gorgeous and so beautiful. I will go, eh, red herring, I don't believe you. Watch them be the bad one. And I will basically guess <laughs> That's kind of what I do. And now we go in with different styles of annotation all the way to how I personally do it and how my books look like. But the very first thing you can do is literally just buy the tabs. Don't have any pens or highlighters or pencils. You can just put in the tab. That's how I personally got started with annotating. I was just tabbing my book. And nowadays I look at it and I'm like, what exactly did I reference? But at the time I felt some semblance of comfort in knowing that if I just pasted the tab, I wasn't defacing a book. I wasn't writing in it. I could take out the tabs if I even wanted to and like it really didn't matter because nothing was being done to the book per se. And all of these tabs, like they are plasticky, but the glue is not strong enough where it would rip out the pages or at least in my experience, it hasn't. Another great option I found when I was just getting started with annotating was that yes, I was placing just the tab, but I also had my post-it. This really saved me from not writing in the book because I didn't feel quite ready to do it yet. And so I was writing down all of my thoughts on the post-it and I was obviously accompanying that with a tab that shared the feeling I was feeling at that point in time, whether that was shock or sadness or love, whether it was world building and I had a note on that, whatever it was, I was just placing these on post-its and again, saved me from having to write on the book. Another super good option because it is just like the post-its and just like the tabs removable is that I started then writing on my books with pencil. I had the tab, but I was also writing down with pencil exactly what I was feeling as I was reading or whatever note I had at that moment in time. So in here, very insightful Mel, I wrote exactly my mindset. It's up to you to take action. I don't know exactly what this is on, but I not only wrote down my thought in pencil, but I also underlined exactly what I was referencing. Another option you have is the tab and a pen. No highlighting, just a pen and a tab. You could also do no tabs and just pen. That is also an option. I've never done that myself just because it would be harder to sort of find my way through the book, but those are still both options. You can do just pencil, just pen, just a highlighter, no tabs, no nothing, because obviously it's another thing you would have to buy. Another thing I was doing at the time is that I was doing tab, pen, post it. Still something I do to this day and it was a great method to sort of write down smaller thoughts on the actual book and then write those longer thoughts on the post it without really crowding the book. Another thing you could do when you're annotating that I have also in the past found it immensely helpful is that on top of the tabs or the pen or the pencil or the highlighter or whatever you're using, you could even do this without any of the previously mentioned things. You just need one of these longer post-its and 
and I would literally write down summaries every 100 pages so that I knew exactly what I had read and like those key moments or those things that really stood out to me within a span of pages. This is also something that I think, again, could be immensely helpful if you don't necessarily want to write down on your books, even if you don't want the tabs, but you want to annotate something or keep note of something. Having those post-it notes every 100 pages is actually pretty great. And now for all of the books that I have annotated quite recently that obviously fit what I do nowadays with annotating. First one I'm going to show you is A Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is a book where I knew more than anything. Yes, I was using my regular system of love, sad, angry themes, triggers. I was really looking for that commentary though, just because of the style of book this is. What you'll be able to see with this book is that I was making squares around names, I was putting down hearts and dots, and I was decorating the book and I was circling things that I really loved or that I really thought were important or that were standing out to me on the page. You'll see that I did a mix of highlighting with squiggly lines and underlining and circling and just all the things. There is no rhyme or reason to that. I just do it based on what I think looks good. But really, if you ask me like, why did you do it, Mel? There is no rhyme. A reason. Typically romances are a little bit different for me and I don't annotate them half as much as I do other genres just because for me I think romance is one of those genres that I mean first of all I don't reach for that often but when I do I just write down little thoughts more than anything maybe reactions. I do like highlight the things that obviously correspond with a particular tab however I don't really write down lengthy thoughts unless I'm like really angry at the book or like I'm really, really, really loving something. Then I'll write down a lengthy note, but otherwise I don't. And what you'll be able to see in this case of book lovers is that I was using a single pen and I was using a single highlighter and I was using a several color tabbing system. I was using many, many colors to tab. However, when it came to the actual writing down on the book, I had one pen and one highlighter. Daisy Jones and the Six was a perfect example of how I still nowadays sometimes, not every time, I will still reach for the color coordination between the tabs and the pens and the highlighters and the everything. And so Daisy Jones was definitely one of those books where I was matching each thing to the tab. And I absolutely love this book. And I think because I don't do this as often anymore, in the particular case of Daisy Jones, which is just one of my favorite books of all time, I absolutely love flipping through this particular copy. Also, just because there was so much to annotate, I feel like there are many a pages that look like this and there are post-its and there's the highlight and there's the pen and there's the different tab colors and I absolutely love it with my entire heart. Another example is Addie LaRue. With this one I was very simple in my annotations. I knew that with Addie because I already read it before and this one in particular was a reread I was looking for things that were either a commentary on something, I was looking for things that made me sad and things that I really really loved as far as the writing went or even something that made me angry. Addie is one of those books that's very emotional for me just because of a lot of relatability points I have to both Henry and Addie as the main characters. And so I knew that this book in particular was wholly going to be an emotional annotation journey. I was using post-its as well and I just had like longer notes on it and then on the outside I was writing like note on Henry, note on Addie, note on Addie and Luke. And I was just going that way throughout the book. And now, you guys' questions. Let's go through a few of these and see what you guys asked that could potentially be helpful for people watching the video as well. Tips in annotating and still staying in the story. If I annotate, I lose interest. Think about it maybe as a response to the characters of like, oh my God, she just said that. Oh my God, I'm fangirling. Oh my God, they just kiss. And just think about it as a replying back to what's happening and not necessarily a, this doesn't make that much sense. Or maybe I didn't like the way this was phrased because annotating can still be fun. Like even though you can be immensely critical with annotating, you can still just do it for fun. And I find that when you're replying to the character's actions or to their dialogue and sort of fangirling alongside the book, I think that might be a good way to just stay in the fun of it. How to restrain yourself from annotating and highlighting every single line on every page. What I do is that I look for the things that truly jump out at me. And if I do want to highlight the entire page, I'll literally just do a bracket. Instead of highlighting or underlining, because it can get quite lengthy, specifically for pages in, let's say, a fantasy book that have 
the entire page worth of world building or important information. I just do a bracket, I put in the tab, and that's it. And then maybe I'll write down like important world building or this is so interesting. And I'll just I'll just write down like a little bit of a note or also you can do the bracket and then only underline those things that you really find important. At least that's what I have done. And it's been immensely helpful. How to annotate without actually writing in the book. Again, what I have seen a lot of people do as far as an alternative goes is that they will buy those transparent post-its. They'll even buy transparent same length as the book pages and they will sort of put that as an overlay on top of their page and they will underline on that transparent post-it or sheet and that way it allows people to annotate their book without having to write on it and it's more of like an insert and an overlay rather than anything else that could be it's extra but it could be a nice little option how to decide what to annotate tab for when starting a new book as you're reading nowadays what i do is that i'll paste that first tab go to the annotation key this this tab means love. I keep on going a few pages. Oh, world building. Go back to the annotation key. World building. I keep on reading. Oh, this is a good character backstory. Reference the annotation key. Tab character backstory and you kind of figure it out as you go and again that may work for other books in the future as well as it could just be a system for that particular book and you kind of figure it out as you go do you add all the categories at the start or as you go i add them as i go now because i have learned that even though again i do have sort of a universal tabbing system every book is different and i won't be reaching for the same things in every single book just because the writing style is different what each author aims for is different and it's best to walk in with sort of like a clear mind and choose as you go because you never know what's going to jump out at you that may be different from the last book you annotated and then i also see a lot of people and i think this is the one i'm closing with is advice for beginners and i mean i do hope that as part of this video in general there are some key takeaways that you yourself can put to use i think more than anything is don't overthink it I think tabbing can be really really fun as long as you allow yourself to go with it and not resist it or not overthink it or think oh should i have tabbed that did i tap this wrong should i have tapped that instead i think when you overthink what exactly you're putting a tab to is when annotating can be not fun and so like anything it has a learning curve if you're over annotating i mean i don't think there's such a thing as like over annotating there might be i don't know i also tend to annotate a lot and so Put those tabs down, write those thoughts down, underline, highlight, do whatever feels right to you in the moment because as you read and you are feeling the things, I am sure future you will appreciate the fact that those tabs were in because initially, I think anything we are annotating is an emotional response or a response of any sort to a book. And so I think you just have to let go of all those mental restraints and just allow yourself to go with it and i think as you go along you'll learn what works for you and what doesn't and as you can see with my own books it has literally been a journey of what i used to do and what i do now and that is everything i have for you guys today i hope that you guys found this video helpful and if they are do let me know down in the comments if you have anything you do that is different do also let us know in the comment or if you have any advice yourself if you have anything you particularly particularly do or that you particularly did that you found immensely helpful when you were starting with your annotation journey leave all of that down in the comments because i am sure people will be looking out for those too and trying to see what they can try out for themselves again i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up down below subscribe for more bookish content if you haven't done so already we are constantly uploading bookish videos in this channel if you want to support the channel further as well i do have a patreon it is always linked down below in case you want to support the channel little extra and also get some extras back as far as exclusive content and live shows go always linked down below alongside all of my socials love you guys so so much and i'll see you on my next one bye guys